faster than a speeding bullet. Meet Bloodhound. The supersonic car hopes to reach 1,000 miles per hour and shatter the existing land speed record of 763 miles per hour. It goes to zero in 1,055 seconds. Okay, it goes through the measured mile in 3.6 seconds. So it's an absolutely huge uh, technical advance. Bloodhound is about 98% complete. And when it's done, it will have three engines, a Rolls-Royce jet from a Eurofighter Typhoon, a cluster of hybrid rockets, and a Jaguar V8 engine. Comparing Bloodhound to a regular sports car or an F1 car, I mean, we have 135,000 horsepower. That's like eight full grids of Formula One cars all in one vehicle. There are 12 cameras built into the vehicle, including two inside the cockpit that will show live footage when Bloodhound first hits the ground. After eight years of research, design, and manufacturing, it made its debut in London this week. When the project was launched in 2008, the team thought breaking the land speed record in 2012 may have been possible. So we are taking unknown technologies and, and known technologies and trying to put them together to, to create this fantastic you know, feat of engineering. So yes, you do have certain delays, as with anything in science, it is all trial and error. But Bloodhound has had its setbacks. The reality is what we're doing here is ridiculously ambitious. So the most difficult thing aerodynamically, which really caused us about a year of holdups, was trying to get the aerodynamics of the back end of the car right. This is the land speed record for cars. Um, so it's got four wheels. We have, one of the things I have to make sure is that those four wheels are always touching the ground. So if we get the aerodynamics wrong, it could turn into an aircraft. Things traveling at this kind of speed have enough energy to take off. So that's critical in terms of the aerodynamic design of the vehicle. Bloodhound is a private venture. So far, the team has raised about $60 million for research, development, and a global education program for children. Another $25 million will be needed to get it to testing in South Africa. Funding a project like this is a massive challenge. You know, we, nobody makes any money from this. It's, we rely entirely on sponsors. So we've been able to make progress really at the rate at which sponsorship money comes into the project. Um, so it is frustrating, uh, 